audience. We now come to the most awaited moment. We are privileged to have an eminent writer and publisher as our keynote speaker, Dr. Isterin Kiri. Dr. Kiri is a Naga poet and author who currently lives in Northern Norway. The majority of her writings are based in the lived realities of the people in Nagaland in Northeast India. Her novel, A Naga Village Remembered, 2003, was the first novel by a Naga writer in English. Some of her novels include A Terrible Matriarchy, 2007, Mari, 2010, Bitter Wormwood, 2011, Journey of the Stone, 2021, among others. Kiri has also translated 200 oral poems from her native language, Tenidye, into English. In 2011, Dr. Kiri was awarded the Governor's Medal for Excellence in Naga Literature. She was also awarded the Free Voice Award by Catalan PEN Barcelona. Bitter Wormwood was shortlisted for the, for the Hindu Prize in 2013. A Terrible Matriarchy was selected to be translated into UN languages, and some of her novels have been translated into German. In 2015, her novel, When the River Sleeps, was awarded the Hindu Literature Prize. We are honored and eager to hear from you, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Yes, good morning, and thank you. I'm embarrassed about the long introduction because I treat Teto as a family and introductions are not necessary between family members. But uh, thank you anyway, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm actually in Kohima at this point and a bit nervous about the um, electricity because these days we don't get electricity in the day. So I'm going to make my speech very brief so that we don't run out of battery on my <laughs> on my laptop. Yes, yes, uh, Teto College, thank you for inviting me. I, I look forward to the day when I can um, physically visit you again. Yeah. And um, yes, I'll just go straight into the subject mat matter. Your seminar, I, I read that it is about voices of the marginalized with special reference to Northeast India. Uh, also, please stop me whenever necessary if you want me to put up my volume. Yeah, I'll, I'll be banking on you, Anjan. <laughs> yeah. Now, I want to start with this um, statement. Let us interrogate the idea of marginalization. I don't like that word, marginalization. Who is marginalizing who? Let's question. This is an age when, when we need to question a lot of preconcepts and a lot of things that we've taken for granted in the past and had them passed on to us. The term marginalization has been around for many decades when we were students uh, at university in 81, uh, 79 to 81, it was the thing to be marginalized, but that is that, that, that is really old hat, and I feel that it's more than high time that we turn this concept on its head. And um, it, uh, I want to ask this question, who told you you were marginalized? Who told you you were marginalized? And I want to stop there a little because it reminds me of one of the first questions that God asked man in the Garden of Eden. He asked Adam or Adam, who told you you were naked? And Adam had no answer, but we'll come back to that. So keep that in a little section of your brain. And let's just think about it. Who told you you were marginalized? because this is a constructed identity that someone from outside wanted to place on you and we allowed them to do that. And then we started to see ourselves as marginalized. So let's rethink this again. And let's do that today, now at this moment. As a writer from the Northeast, I frequently get asked questions, like uh, questions or I get asked, if we are 
we from the Northeast, me and all my writer friends from the Northeast, if we are hoping to be more included in the mainstream. And this happened when I got the Hindu award for one of my books. It, it was asked several times, are you hoping to be <laughs> more included in the mainstream now? Then I've, I have, I, I can tell you that I've been asked about rude questions and ignorant questions at all the literature festivals outside the Northeast. And the rude questions always come from a politically motivated corner than the ignorant questions. Those, I expect them to continue so long as ignorant people are around. We can't do anything about it. It's just shrug your shoulders, kya karega. But um, the question, do you want to be included in the mainstream? What should we do to be part of the mainstream? These, these are such ludicrous questions. And these are things that the Northeast has been asked time after time. So um, when your seminar used the word marginalized, I wanted to say that it suggests that there is a center and there are margins. And by that reasoning, we, the Northeast, are the margins. So um, I just want to say and share that this is a very dangerous idea. It's dangerous ideology. This is a mindset that has been accepted by political situations and people are still trapped in it. But let's sort of separate it because it works. It works in a political situation. We think of Delhi as the center, and it is. Or if we want to be very argumentative, I looked at the map of India today, and I saw that Delhi is so way north. It's not the center. Bhopal should be the center. We could argue like that, but there's no time. Life is too short. So um, I, I call it a dangerous ideology because when you divide regions into center and margins or peripheries, you get so many complexities that go beyond the geographical. And um, in layman's language, I want to say it messes with your mind. It really messes with your mind. And the thing is, you get a, a mindset. You get a mindset, you get a mentality. And what happens is you see yourself as forgotten. You see yourself as neglected. You see yourself as victimized. You see yourself as overlooked. And there's nothing positive about such a mindset, really. And OK, that may be true. It's not, I'm not saying no, no, no to these things. It may be true that in the past or even now, these things are going on. But let's not adopt that. Let's not go around living with that mindset because it is uh, so negative. Why should we appropriate it? And um, it's, you know, uh, something that we should resist with all our hearts. And why should we in the Northeast try so hard to be part of the mainstream? Why should we run after a mindset that depends on our inferiority complex in order to survive. You, you, you got that, no? It depends on our inferiority complex in order to survive. So this, this is a thing that gets me all riled up. Uh, I've, I've uh, been discussing this topic in Sikkim, in Gangtok, then in Aizol, then all the way to Goa, and the wonderful thing, Goa, because Goa is also considered a perif periphery by the center. So we were all in agreement that we, uh, we don't want to accept ourselves as marginalized because it's so unhealthy. And um, you go to all the so-called margins and you will hear this same argument that they don't feel themselves marginalized. They never want to see, see themselves as marginalized. And we in Nagaland should never, never see ourselves as marginalized either. My next sentence, please don't misunderstand it. In literature, in literature, it's highly dangerous to accept the idea of a center and margins. 
as I said before, it works fine for political geography, but we are not under that. And uh, we don't have a problem that they have centers and margins in political geography, but let us not make the mistake of adapting or integrating it into the field of literature. Why? Because when we start to acknowledge the presence of a center, what happens is we give authority away to the center. And then we give it the authority to define us. See, it's really, really dangerous. I'm not just saying some pretty words or some um, current words, but they, uh, the, the center gets the authority to define us. It gets the authority to make decisions about our writing. And I say this from, I speak from experience. And then it gets the audacity, the temerity to put expectations on us, how we should be writing, what we should write, you know, even the content, it starts to control the content. So I'll, I'll give some examples about that. It, this is so dangerous for our cultural survival and the threat of homogenization of the Northeast it, it's very real. And then if we continue to believe in a center, we will lose our quintessential selves. And we will lose those elements that make us unique, make us original. And then another danger is that um, it takes power over the writing of our histories, especially the writing of our political histories. And it decides what can be written, what cannot be written. And um, Isol has experienced that. So let's remember, even from a political angle, the center is a creation that is only interested in protecting itself. I, I'm, I'm being very radical, but this is the truth. It's a creation that's only interested in protecting itself, itself and not about, it's, it's not about us at all. So, um, yeah, I, I want to go on from there. And then I want to also add that there will always be inequality, injustice in the acknowledgement of a center and inevitably its margins. And then it's very insidious. So the insidiousness of the culture of having a center, sorry, the insidiousness of the culture of having a center could lead to delegitimization of our stories delegitimization of our stories and then at worst it would could lead to delegitimization of our existences as ethnic entities so let's be aware of all that and then um yes i talk about recentering the center recentering the center and this is basically about choice you make a choice to recenter yourself then you make um, a decision to reject the definitions that others have given you about yourself. Um, I'll give you two examples here. Um, as uh, Dr. Huesa has uh, mentioned, the first images that we had of ourselves were from the colonial gaze, the colon colonial officers, the writings, the official writings and also the anthropological books written on us. Um, if you take time and read through, you can just make a list of how many times we are called barbaric, how many times we're called savage and all these derogatory terms. And then we who read it at first grew up thinking, okay, I'm educated but my ancestors were barbaric. My forefathers were savage. You know, we grew up with that mentality. So because we accepted that definition given of us by others, then the other is um, um, this magazine that all of you are familiar with, Northeast Sun, Northeast Sun, right. That has given a definition about the Northeast, which is accepted wherever that magazine is read. And I'm so angry with it because it sells violence, it sells conflict and sensationalizes the Northeast. 
and it always picks on something happening somewhere, a bomb blast or, but you know, the level of violence we have here is so low actually, so that when something happens, it is news. Other places, it's happening all the time. It's no longer news, but we are created as the, these groups of people who are always in conflict. These groups of people who thrive on violence because our forefathers were headhunters. See, look at the look at the the way it's designed. So um, we can think about alternatives, and an alternative is that is about the recentering of the center, and then you take charge. Don't let others take charge over you, over your destiny. You make the decision to see value in what you have, because when others define you they devalue you. In the past, we've been devalued so much. So I always use this uh, phrase, being Naga-centric. Being Naga-centric as opposed to being Eurocentric. Not And, and when I say Naga-centric, don't feel that uh, communities that are not Naga are excluded. No. Is anyone born in Nagaland? I had this wonderful student when I was teaching at university in Nagaland. Um, and he was originally from Bihar, but grown, born and brought up here. So he said when he went away to study in Delhi, he came back saying, ma'am, they're not like us. And you know what that means? They're not like us. He couldn't fit in because he was a Naga in his heart. So let's make it very inclusive. It's anyone who thinks of Nagaland as home. Don't allow others to devalue don't allow others to define you and what you do is you recall all the positive things that visitors say about us and um, i think 90 percent of visitors to the northeast they like it they love it they return and then they 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 have so many positive things to say about us right except for the ones who get drunk and fight with somebody <laughs> most of the time we hear positive things Let's take those things and then add to that, add to that the things we know about ourselves that are good because that is our real value. And um, that is where our center should be. So if we need a center, remember we are the center. We are the center. We are where our center is, actually is. And we should take pride in it and we should take care of it. Um, so recentering the center is not allowing others to dictate, to dictate to us. We've been dictated to for so long. Our literature has been dictated to saying, oh, it's such a young literature. But actually, we have a very old literature. Let's remember that. We've crossed from oral to written, and we're, we're still in the transition page, uh, pay, phase. Sorry. So um, because we're still in the tr transition phase and our written literature is not as much in volume as others. It doesn't mean that we didn't have literature before written literature. We had masses of beautiful, wonderful oral literature. So that's what we have. We should always take both into account. Then um, this thing about marginalization, uh, it makes that, that mindset makes us, tries to make us feel we're missing out. It tries to make us feel we're missing out from something because we are far from the imagined center, okay? And we are not, no way, because we are not missing out on air pollution, for one. We are not missing out on city crime. We are not missing out on stressful living. And um, we have clean air except maybe in November, December, when the dust level rises. Otherwise, we have such good, clean air. We have good water. Kwema water is so sweet. I can't drink enough of it. <laughs> I know <coughs> Dimapur water is also good. The streets are safe for women. Still, our streets are very safe for women. Sikkim, Gangtok, they said, a woman can walk through the town at 2 a.m. in the morning, never get molested. What is that? That is life in the Northeast. That is normal to gang talk. Then <coughs> we have 
we live in a place where there's respect for people, for fe fellow humans. So why exchange all that for the opposite of it? Why exchange that for caste bigotry, for food politics, for gender violence? So we, we don't want <laughs> to get close to the Imagine Center. We don't need to. We have it so much better here. Um, yeah, so I want to also say that we have to stop using the political center as a yardstick against which to measure ourselves. And then we have to relearn to believe in our own worth. Then let's take care of our center, as I said before, and no one else can take care of our center as we can, as you can, as I can. Recentering ourselves is learning to own ourselves again. Um, own ourselves, own our stories. Here, I want to pause and tell you about uh, a student, another student who was in Sayax in uh, Bangalore. He needed to write something about the Angami Festival of Sekrini. And somebody told him, recommended a book by um, Anon Naga. Uh, I won't say names, but I always call her a cultural thief because she takes away our stuff and publishes them and becomes the expert. See, that is the thing we have to. Please, Tetsu College, I want you to take this up. Cultural theft is going on right and left. And some, something like a body like yours can, can do a lot to stop it, to educate our people. So this person took away the story of Sekrini, wrote about it, put it in a book. And this young student was told, that's the best book on Sekrini. That's the best book on this Angami festival. So I luckily he wrote to me and I told him, I'll, I'll translate it for you. Don't you ever use that book? Use a book by Naga. And if not, I'm going to translate. And I did. I spent two days translating, but I can't, as long as I'm alive, I can't allow him to use stuff written by a cultural thief. Okay. So um, that is how we take care of our center. That is how we own ourselves and take care of our intellectual property, our cultural property, by insisting that we are the experts because we are the experts. It's not, I don't say it with pride. You are the experts on Rema and uh, different tribal cultures. You are the experts on your community cultures. And I am the expert, or I try to be the expert in my culture, etc. And uh, let's, let's not have an inferiority complex about that because this is something that we are born into. Yes, and then remember the power politics and the psychological control. There is a play behind the concept of marginalization. And um, don't be a watered down version of yourself because if you submit to, be, to marginalization, you will become a watered down version there are groups that want to water you down so that you fit in. But, but uh, that's, that's really, fitting in is not, not the question at hand. They want to water you down so they can label you. And uh, as a writer, I can also tell you that there's a very irritating trend to label a writer and have been labeled as feminist and eco-feminist and what other East. <laughs> So at least it's not ISIS, but I'm not happy with that because I'm not. I'm not this one East or another East. We are human beings. Don't allow people to East you. <laughs> and um, it's so one-sided. It's so unhealthy. And also there are some researchers who get very angry if I don't write about conflict in other areas, conflict in the nor Northeast. But I'm insisting that conflict is just 9%, 8% of what I write about when I write about my history, the history of my people. And that's not the main focus. And um, you're trying to put me in a box. I refuse to be put in a box. And, and the same thing here for all of us when uh, as scholars and as also as people, as human beings, don't allow anyone to put you in a box and label you. We're not commodities, we're human beings. So um, 
let's not compromise on our identity because it's God, God given. And when we ask the question, where is our center? I want to tell you this Adivasi story. Um, my Adivasi friend, Hansda, Sovendra Hansa, has a story that's very similar to an Angami story. And he said, when they are born, they bury their um, placenta in, in a, close to the place of the birth. And then many years after, when they feel homesick, they long for the place where the placenta is buried. And we have the, exactly the same version that homesickness is that you feel homesick for the place where your placenta is buried. So that is the designated place that we consider as home. That is your center, home. The place where you feel at home is your center. And um, it's just really lovely that both the Adivasi and the Nagas shared this story. And all these marginalized people will have stories like that, stories about belonging. It's, it's about belonging and where we belong, that, that is our center. So let's not be deceived. If, um, if you feel discontented, are you feeling discontented? I would like to ask. And are you feeling marginalized? If you are, then can you recognize that this is coming? The discontent is coming from an external source, an external source. Come back to Adam. God asked, who told you you're naked? And Adam had, you know, a very flimsy answer because it didn't come from himself. It didn't come internally. It came from an external source. So he was deceived, but let us not be deceived. Let us recognize where our center is. Let us work on some things and work on perceptiveness, work on self-knowledge, and let's grow up. Let's grow up. Let's not um, keep adopting theories, adopting whatever that somebody somewhere <laughs> sends down. Let's not put it on. It doesn't suit us, you know. Let's stop comparing ourselves with others. And then let's just work on improving ourselves because that's the best gift you can give yourself. And uh, yes, I, I'll stop from there. Thank you very much again. And uh, I've been invited to the next session, but um, so long as my battery lasts. <laughs> so thank you all again.